Hi everybody, it's the Ruthless Jobber here. Thank you very much for joining me again on this channel. This is Star Trek Outer Worlds. We are playing Star Trek Adventures Captain's Log. It's the solo version of Star Trek Adventures. This episode we'll be rolling up a mission, hopefully starting the mission, see where we go with it. I'm still very new to all this, so I'm going to need some thinking time I expect, so quite uh, quite how... <laughs> How far I get, I don't know, but let's um, let's start off. Uh, well, first of all, just a quick recap. Really, we've got um, the beginnings of our story where we uh, our ship has been dragged into a a different galaxy to the one that we are familiar with, to the one that we exist in in real life, and the one that uh, Star Trek TV shows have been based in, the Milky Way, of course. And we are in a completely different galaxy. We don't know anybody. There's one race we've met, known as the Azazog. And that's it really, that's basically it. So we're gonna roll up a mission then. Now I'm gonna roll some dice then. Well, roll 1d20. I've got the uh, Star Trek Captain's Log book open as well, so I know what I'll be what I'll be looking for. And we have rolled a seven, which is espionage. Espionage, okay. Um, espionage, have I spelled that right? Yeah, I think I have. Espionage, okay. So we, we, I need to uh, scroll down now to where it says Espionage Missions in the book. Here we go, another D20. This is gonna be interesting. Um, so yeah, where are we? Let me roll another D20 then. Five, decrypt a message. Decrypt a message. Okay, that's fairly, I was gonna say that's fairly Basic, but we can do something with it. Um, I want to spell this right. Decrypt a message. So perhaps, okay, yeah, we're doing this with the Azazog. The Azazog have come to us. They want our expertise. They can't quite uh, decipher it, or perhaps one of, one of their ships has come across a, a message from one of their enemies so we'll probably roll up something another kind of um i might do this off camera but roll up another species who are perhaps at war with the azazog and they've uh, intercepted this message but yes it's encrypted and they have asked us to decrypt decrypt it so yeah I, okay i can work with that so what else do we need to do then now i've done that i'm sure there's something else we need to roll on isn't there let me i'm just scrolling through the the book here, ah, incident and theme. Okay, so another D20 roll, seven. Explore, okay. So that was the incident, incident, explore, and the theme, another D20 roll, 16. 16 and that is spatial rift spatial rift okay i don't quite know how to put all this together at the moment i spelled spatial wrong haven't i uh spatial t isn't it spatial rift okay uh, actually i'm gonna move that down let's do that do that do that okay so theme explore spatial rift is the sorry incident is explore and the spatial rift is theme so yeah, okay, yeah, we're obviously exploring somewhere. We've come across, we, we, we come across, I, I shouldn't really be doing all this, I should be doing this in play. But I think, yeah, we're exploring, as, as we do, because we are explorers, and we come across a Azazog ship. Perhaps even the same one we helped before. In, in uh, We didn't do it in game, but uh, we the, the way we met the Azazog was one of their ships was in trouble. We helped them escape through, uh, we helped navigate them Help them navigate through an asteroid field of some sort. Okay, advantages and complications. I need to roll on. I need to roll a d20 and find out whether it's an even number or an, or an odd number. So another d20 roll. Odd number, which means complications. So we need to roll a d20 again. And we get a seven, which is a disease outbreak. The outbreak of a plague or contagion gravely affects the environment, forcing sanit uh, sanitation to be of even greater concern 
and more precautions taken to prevent infection. Okay, so somewhere along the line, yeah, uh, I don't know how we're going to fit all this together yet. This is um, very different. For, I've only really ever played uh, Starforged, Iron Sworn Starforged, which is basically you, you you do everything from the very beginning. This is a very different way of. So we 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 roll up the the mission, but we haven't even started the game yet. So I've got to kind of fit it all together. Complication. Um, does it? I'm just going to copy and paste that. Disease outbreak, the outbreak of a plate, yeah, okay. Was there anything else I needed to roll on before we get going? No. Or, yes, type of encounter. R I think. <laughs> type of encounter, let's roll another d20. Lots of rolling at the moment. So that is an 18, which is an uninhabited planet. Okay, so this was a uh, type of encounter. So encounter... Encounter, uninhabited planet. I'm being really uh, lazy and just copying and pasting. Encounter, uninhabited planet. So let's go down to the un uninhabited planet, right at the very bottom, of course it is. So I'm scrolling through. Another D20 roll is due. And that's a 12. Um, possesses a cycle of rebirth that triggers every 24 hours. Possesses a cycle of rebirth that triggers in every time. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna we'll go with it. We'll go with it. In fact, let's put that in there. Okay, possesses a cycle of rebirth that triggers every twenty-four hours. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Anything else I need to roll on? No, we've got now. Okay, yeah, I've just got to the bit in the rule book of the. Uh, momentum and threat and all that kind of thing. I mean, we won't worry about that just yet. I'm going to kick this off, I guess, then. So, okay, the story starts here. So, Captain Kingston O'Neill, Captain... Actually, do you know what? I'm going to bullet point this. I'm not going to... I'm not going to novelise this. Yeah, I'm not going to novelise this. It's my first one. Well, it's not technically my first one, but it, it's the first one I'm sort of taking seriously. So I'm going to sort of just bullet point kind of what happens. The story starts here. Let's bold that, underline it, and maybe even give it a slightly bigger. There we go, 14 there. There we go. Okay, so bullet points. The crew are exploring a system they found interesting. I don't know why yet. The crew are exploring a system that they found interesting. That found it, they found interesting. And come across a planet that appeared uninhabited. But life signs were detected. But few, but a, a handful of life signs were detected. So we are going to, I'm going to take my crew with me. And what I've got, I can't remember if I showed you this. Did I show you this last time? There's my crew. Um, it'd help if you could actually see it, wouldn't it? Uh, Doctor is a male Vulcan, ends in solo. Science officer is a human female, Commander India Johansson. Comms officer is a human male, ends in Samuel Walker. The helmsman is an Andorian female, Lieutenant Toshe. There was a, a thing for surnames in this random name generator, but as far as I've read, Andorians didn't really use surnames. I'm certainly not using that. I can't pronounce that. Chief of security is a male Borg known as Commander Mark V, as in stylized Roman, num Roman numerals, Mark V. And the chief engineer is a human female, Lieutenant Conscience Fairweather. So on this mission, I'm going to take with me Doctor, ends in solo. So the captain chooses his team to travel to the planet's 
surface. Okay. And that team is. Whoops, let's do that again. Dr. Enzin Solo. I'm just going to put Dr. Solo, Dr. Solo, or Solo. I don't know how you pronounce that. Dr. Solo, um, comms officer. In case possibly we need to translate some language. So, comms officer, comms officer. Uh, what was their name? <laughs> Samuel. Samuel Walker. And I think one more, maybe two. Chief of Security, in case I need some. Yeah, Chief of Security, Commander Mark 5. Uh, I'm just going to put Commander Mark 5. I don't think anyone's going to forget that they're my security. Actually, let's just put security and OK. Um, medical. So I'm taking solo in case there's any anyone that needs medical attention, the comms officer in case there's any complications with language, and commander mark five for security in case things get a little bit nasty. Okay. Um, so we are uh, we travel to the to the planet's surface. So we get into our, our shuttle and we head down to the planet's surface. I I, I we don't have our helmsman with me so what i'm going to do i'm going to because i love rolling dice and i'm going to roll a dice here to see i'm i'm at the helm and i want to see uh is it a bumpy ride do we get close to do we get relatively close to where the the life signs are um emanating from so let's get another bullet point here and um so captain O'Neill pilots the shuttle and so we're going to roll on what am I going to roll on I guess I'm going to roll on uh, going to roll on control and command so it's 16 so if I if I if I get this correctly, we need to roll two d20s and I need one of them to be under 16. It seems a little bit easy. I must admit, it seems a little bit easy. But I'm pretty sure that is what I need to do. So let's roll two d20s. And I need to be one below 16. Oh, well, they both smashed it. And that means I get a momentum, doesn't it? Because they both beat it. I'm sure I get a momentum for that. Um, where are we here with? I should probably fill this out soon, actually. So the mission tracker, I guess I can tick one of those off as well now. Because I guess the first task was to get close to the where the life signs are. Well, technically the mission hasn't started yet, really. Okay, I'll leave that. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing with this game. I don't get it. I need to watch some more videos. Yeah, so where do you track your momentum and threat and all that kind of thing? I'm just, I'm just going to make a note. I'm just going to make a note here that we've got a uh, plus one momentum. Plus one momentum. Okay, because I'm pretty sure I have. When we get to the surface then, so, oh yeah, rolled... Um, I can't remember what I rolled. One and a 14, one, 14. Um, versus the uh, command and con, which was 17. So I passed that with absolute flying colors. Okay, when we get to the surface, we find, we find this ship. It's an Azazog ship. Um, once we track the life signals we come across a azazog azazog i'm sure that's how i spelled it i'm sure that's how it was spelt azazog why why does that not stay where i want it to azazog yeah azazog we come across an azazog ship first of all they're threatened they feel threatened maybe they're not the same people that we saw before I think they they feel threatened. Uh, they are threatened, threat threatened by us. 
So I need to roll a, I guess it's reason. I try to explain that. We are friends. We previously helped an Azazog ship navigate through a an asteroid field. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna roll roll against reason and okay, what what will be the other so what's the other skill that I would roll against here? Reason and... I've got my communications officer. Haven't I? So they, I guess they would do, they would do the job. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to roll on one of these ones then. Because it's, because it's them that are doing the talking. So, I mean, what, I still don't know what I would roll on, to be honest. Sensors, weapon, structure, no. My eyes are terrible. What does that say? Comms. Yeah, so comms and uh, command. See, these ones are going to be difficult. Comms and command. That's only 12. So comms and command. So it's comms. Comms and command. So this is Samuel Walker. Um, and that is 12 and I roll a let's have a look 2d20 need to get one below 12 yes oh yeah 20 well, I don't know what that means that might mean something <laughs> it might mean something 7 and a 20 roll 7 and a 20 so we do pass so they convince the these Azazog people that first of all they kind of say look how would I know your language so quickly, so easily, if we hadn't already gone through the process of the translation? And they kind of, yeah, they accept it. Okay. And then, you know, whatever's happened to your ship, we could help you. And I think the Azazog are saying, we're not in any danger. We've, we've landed here because we've picked up an abandoned, a signal for an abandoned ship of another race. Uh, I think we can roll that race, can't we? Let's let's roll that race. Okay, I think I'm doing this right. So we want an intelligent creature. So we need to roll on the vertebrates. I believe. <laughs> life form, under the booklet, life form size. When creating a beast or unintelligent creature for your character to interact with, consider how big it is, blah, blah, blah. What about intelligent creatures? I know I already went through this process to create the Azazog, but it was a couple of weeks ago now. Okay, I'm going to go with this and we'll go with um, the life form size. But obviously, if I roll up something like um, microscopic or cosmozoin, uh, obviously I'm going to re-roll and get something a bit more um, realistic. Because if, if the Azazog are at war with these people, they need to be relatively kind of, you know, either humanoid, maybe a bit bigger, maybe a bit smaller, but I, I don't want to, should I just say humanoid? I'm just going to say the humanoid size. So, yeah, let, let's let's forget trying to be clever. So, we've got another uh what am I doing here? I need to create a new so they are humanoid. Why am I why is that all gone a bit funny? Why Okay, just leave that as it is. A humanoid. Okay, and then we need to roll yeah, we'll roll so vertebrates. So, let's roll on on that. So, d20 on that and we get a 15 which is it's a mammal okay fine so it's kind of probably humanoid ish so um a humanoid size uh yeah so humanoid size and it is a mammal have i spelled that right probably not no um oh come on this is all a little bit fiddly mammal and then we roll on the so it's not an invertebrate, is it? So I mean, I could have said no. Well, it's not. Uh, well, I could have done. I 
Could have done, couldn't I? Could have, it could have been a, an insect or a, an arachnid or... No, okay, well, we'll stick with what we've got now anyway because I've done it now. Yeah, I mean, there's no way of sort of randomly generating... Yeah, I'm a little bit frustrated by this, if I'm completely honest. Structural adaptions. Let's roll another d20. I love rolling dice. Here we go. 19. Webbed fingers and toes. Webbed fingers and toes. Right, webbed fingers and toes. Just paste, copy and paste that. Very lazy. Webbed fingers and toes. Behavioural adaptions. Another d20 roll. Two. Borrowing. Okay, they're borrowers. So they perhaps live underground. Something like that. And then pref ah, preferred environments. Well, this would be interesting if they live underground. What are we going to get? Um, another d20. Four. Uh, Deciduous forest. Okay. Deciduous forest. I'll, I'll um, write better notes off camera. You don't want to be bored by me. You're probably already bored, actually. But you don't want to be bored by me just um, you know, sort of writing a few different bits and bobs. What I might do for the next episode is get the rule book on screen. I wasn't going to do it, but I'm spending a lot of time in it. So I think it's, just, it's fair to say, it's just fair really that you can sort of see what I can see. Uh, I mean, there's a few other tables I could perhaps be rolling on there. No, okay, I think I'll leave it at that. We haven't got a name for them yet though. Okay, name generator then, another D20. And that is an 11. So on 11, that's B-A-D-C. B-A-D-C. So another D20 then. B-A-D-C. So the B, 18. Op. The A. Op. That's a 9. Which is the A. Po. Op. Po. Op. Po. Oppo, Oppo, and let's see what we get with the D as well. The D, that's a seven. Oppower, Oppower, the Oppower, the Oppower. I don't think I want to get a C there as well. Oppower is probably about where I want to go with that one. Oppower, Oppower. Okay, um, in fact, that was a U. Uh, U, U, W, op, op, oh yeah, that's right, that is right, <laughs> op hour. Because I've got op, po, and then ua, so, op, so it's the op hour. Back to the story then. The Azazog. Azazog. Are here. To collect data from a crashed op hour <laughs> how did i spell it oh op hour o p p o u um where are we w a op from a crashed op hour ship however it is encrypted and they request our assistance okay so yeah um i don't know whether i'm playing this game right i have no i have no idea i'm actually going to leave it there because i think i've recorded now about half an hour i don't really want these episodes dragging too long and i've done a lot of kind of stuff that you guys haven't seen like i say i'm going through sort of tables and stuff with the with the rule book and i think for the next episodes i'm gonna try and place this rule book somewhere on the screen for you guys to see as well it might get a bit fiddly for me but i think it's the right thing to do so yeah i hope you've enjoyed that one please uh give me some advice um the, the first episode got a few more viewers than i thought it would i mean nothing nothing spectacular but i'm glad that people sort of checked it out and if, if you've checked this one out as well please give me some advice i i, I have no idea what i'm doing 
Um, and is, is there any other tools I could be using that could help? I mean, I kind of like to, if I, if I buy a game, particularly a solo RPG, I kind of like to just, just use those tools because I think, well, that's how it was made, that's how it was sold, that's how... But I know people do use other tools for their solo games. So I'm not completely, not completely against the idea. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Take care of yourselves, everybody, and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.